Welcome to Wisdom Trek with Grams. I am Guthrie Chamberlain and we are on day 2490 of our trek. The purpose of Wisdom Trek is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, and to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. In today's Wisdom Nugget, we'll be diving into Psalm 31 verses 9 through 18 from the New Living Translation. David continues with a heartfelt prayer to God in this passage, crying out for his mercy and deliverance. He is deeply troubled emotionally, physically, and spiritually. But what stands out is how, amid his pain, he continues to turn to God for his refuge and rescue. We can all learn from David's vulnerability before God, especially when we find ourselves in times of distress. Let's take a moment to read Psalm 31 verses 9 through 18, and then we'll break it down into smaller sections to see what lessons we can draw from David's words. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in distress. Tears blur my eyes. My body and soul are withering away. I am dying from grief. My years are shortened by sadness. Sin has drained my strength. I am wasting away from within. I am scorned by all my enemies and despised by all my neighbors. Even my friends are afraid to come near to me. When they see me on the street, they turn the other way. I am ignored as if I were dead, even as if I were a broken pot. I have heard many rumors about me, and I am surrounded by terror. My enemies conspire against me, plotting to take my life. I am trusting in you, O Lord, saying, You are my God. My future is in your hands. Rescue me from those who hunt me down relentlessly. Let your favor shine upon your servant. In your unfailing love, rescue me. Don't let me be disgraced, O Lord, for I call out to you for help. Let the wicked be disgraced. Let them lie silent in their graves. Silence their lying lips, those proud and arrogant lips that accuse the godly. David begins verse 9 of this psalm with an intense cry for mercy. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in distress. Tears blur my eyes. My body and soul are withering away. Right away we sense the depth of David's anguish. He is not just feeling a little bit down. He is in a deep place, overwhelming distress. His tears are so frequent that his vision is blurred, and his emotional pain is so intense that it is affecting him physically. He says his body and soul are withering away, a vivid picture of someone who feels completely spent both spiritually and physically. This is a reminder that as human beings, we are not just spirits or bodies, but we are whole persons. When we are in deep emotional and spiritual distress, it can affect us physically. David isn't ashamed to admit his weakness and his weariness. Instead, he brings it before God, asking for mercy. In verse 10, he continues, I am dying from grief. My years are shortened by sadness. Sin has drained my strength. I am wasting away from within. Here, David reflects on how prolonged sorrow and grief has taken a toll on his life. It's not just a momentary feeling. His sadness has affected him over a long period, even cutting his life short in his perception. David acknowledges that sin has drained his strength. Whether he is referring to his own sin or the effects of living in a sinful, broken world, it's clear that sin's consequences have him feeling weak and depleted. He is wasting away, not just outwardly, but inwardly as well. How often do we, too, feel this way when the burdens of life weigh us down? Sometimes our sorrow feels unshakable, and our strength seems to disappear. But like David, we can come to God in those moments of weakness and ask Him for mercy and strength. David describes his isolation in verse 11. I am scorned by all my enemies and despised by my neighbors. Even my friends are afraid to come near me. When they see me on the street, they run the other way. Not only is David dealing with his deep internal pain, but he is also facing rejection and abandonment from those around him. His enemies mock him and even his neighbors and friends have turned their backs on him. This is a powerful image of loneliness and isolation. It is the one thing to face personal struggles, but the pain is multiplied when those around you seem to abandon you. David's situation is so bad that people literally avoid him on the street. They don't want to be associated with him. He feels despised and rejected. In verse 12, David goes further. I am ignored as if I were dead, as if I were a broken pot. He feels invisible, forgotten, and useless, like a broken piece of pottery that has no purpose for anyone. This imagery of brokenness is profound. It shows that David feels discarded, as if his life no longer holds any value. We've all experienced times when we felt alone, abandoned, or broken. David's words remind us that even in our darkest moments, when we feel forgotten or rejected by others, God is still present and we can pour our hearts out to Him. He sees us even when others do not. 
David's distress continues in verse 13. I have heard many rumors about me, and I am surrounded by terror. My enemies conspire against me, plotting to take my life. Now, David isn't just dealing with inner turmoil or social rejection. He is also facing real external threats. His enemies are spreading rumors and lies about him, creating an atmosphere of fear and uncertainty. Worse yet, they are plotting to take his life. This is a situation of immense pressure. David feels surrounded by terror, and the danger is not just imagined, it is real. His enemies are actively seeking to destroy him. He can sense the weight of his fear and danger that he is experiencing. In our lives, we may not face physical enemies the same way David did, but we often feel surrounded by stress, fear, and the pressures of life. Whether it's false accusations, misunderstanding, or just the overwhelming challenges of our daily responsibilities, we can relate to the feeling as though the world is conspiring against us. But once again, David doesn't remain in the place of fear and despair. He turns to the one who can deliver him from this overwhelming situation. In verse 14, we see a shift in David's tone. I am trusting in you, O Lord, saying, You are my God. Amid his fear, isolation, and danger, David makes a conscious choice to trust in the Lord. He declares, You are my God, reaffirming his personal relationship with the Lord. This isn't just a vague hope. It's a deep personal trust in God's character and sovereignty. In verse 15, David says, My future is in your hands. Rescue me from those who hunt me down relentlessly. What a profound statement of faith. Despite everything going on around him, David acknowledges that his future is ultimately in God's hand. His life, his destiny, and his safety are all under God's control. This is a powerful reminder for us. No matter what challenges or dangers we face, our future is not determined by the circumstances around us. It is in God's hand. When we trust in Him, we can find peace even amid chaos, knowing that He is in control. David asked God to rescue him from those who pursue him, and his confidence comes from his belief that God is more powerful than his enemies. He knows that no matter how relentless his enemies are, God's power and protection are even greater. David's prayer continues in verse 16. Let your favor shine on your servant. In your unfailing love, rescue me. Here David is asking for God's favor and love to be upon him. He's not relying on his own righteousness or abilities. Instead, he's calling on God's unfailing love and grace to rescue him. He also pleads in verse 17, Don't let me be disgraced, O Lord, for I call out to you for help. Let the wicked be disgraced. Let them lie silent in their grave. David is asking for vindication. He doesn't want to be put to shame for trusting in God. And he prays that it will be his enemies, the wicked, who are disgraced instead. David longs for justice, but he trusts that God will bring justice about. He's not seeking personal revenge. Instead, he's asking for God to silence the voices of those who oppose him and to bring about righteous judgment. Finally, in verse 18, David concludes this section with another plea for justice. Silence the lying lips, those proud and arrogant lips that accuse the godly. David knows his enemy's lies are powerful and destructive. But he also knows that God is greater. He asks God to silence the false accusation and lies of the wicked. As we reflect on this portion of Psalm 31, we see a man in deep distress, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. But he still places his trust in God. David's honesty about his pain and fear is an example to us. It's okay to cry out to God when we are hurting, and it's okay to admit that we feel overwhelmed and abandoned. But like David, we are also reminded to place our trust in God, even when life seems out of control. We can declare, you are my God, and trust that our future is in his hands. God is our refuge, our deliverer, and the one who will bring justice about in his perfect timing. I encourage you to meditate on this psalm this week and bring your own fears and struggles before the Lord. Know that he hears you and he will never forsake you. Thank you for joining me through this journey through Psalm 31. Until the next time, May God's peace and strength be yours as you continue on your trek toward wisdom. And if you found this podcast insightful, please subscribe and leave us a review. Then encourage your friends and family to join us and come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, and most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. As we take this trek of life together... Let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy 
each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and create a great day every day. See you next time for more Daily Wisdom.